how normal swallowing works. Here's your person here from the side view. This is the tongue, here's the nasal passages. Here's the bolus, and that's the food or the liquid or the pill or whatever they're swallowing is called a bolus. First, the bolus is pushed from the front of the mouth to the back of the oral cavity, and the tongue plays a big part in this, so the food is pushed posteriorly to the back of the oral cavity. Then, the soft palate, that's this right here, this is at the back of the roof of your mouth, the soft palate raises when we swallow and it meets the back of the throat. And it does this to actually close off the nasal passages so that food or liquid doesn't actually escape through the nose. So the nasal passages are closed off and upper respiration is blocked. From there, the bolus moves down and it approaches two tubes that are in the throat. The front one here, here in the front, is the trachea and this actually leads to our lungs. So we don't want food or liquid going here. The back one is the esophagus, and this is behind the airway. This leads to our stomach, and so this is where the food or liquid should go in a normal swallow. And to help ensure that it does go down the right way and enters the stomach instead of the lungs, our body has a few different protection mechanisms. And one of those is our vocal folds. Those are right here in the airway, our two vocal cords or vocal folds. Those close off. They come together and close off the airway when we swallow to actually prevent any material from going down into the lungs. And another form of protection is right here. This is the epiglottis. And it actually flaps over the airway and meets the closed vocal folds to protect it further and make sure that nothing goes down that way. So as you can see here, the bolus is moving back. Here in this picture, this is a little later in the swallow, and the soft palate has elevated to block off upper respiration, and the bolus is moving down the esophagus, and here the vocal folds are closed to protect the airway, and the epiglottis is flapped over to protect it further. So as the bolus travels down the esophagus, respiration is temporarily blocked, so it's true that you can't breathe and swallow at the same time, and then the bolus travels down the esophagus into the stomach. Difficulty swallowing is referred to as dysphagia. Um, one of the most, the biggest concern, I guess you could say, of dysphagia is aspiration. And this is when food or liquid actually enters the lungs. So it actually goes down the wrong way, the muscles don't protect the airway like they should, and the food or liquid enters the airway instead of the esophagus. Um, this is aspiration. This can be caused by many different things. There are many causes of dysphagia and they can be at any phase of the swallow. So um, there's actually a swallowing center in the brain, in the medulla of the brainstem, that controls parts of the swallow, the parts that are involuntary that get triggered by this part of our brain. And so any kind of brain damage can cause dysphagia. This could be a stroke or an actual brain injury. Um, dementia is a common cause of dysphagia. And a lot of times people don't really associate dementia with swallowing. But actually in Alzheimer's disease, aspiration is one of the most common causes of death. So this really is a serious issue that really is often um, underestimated and not given the attention that it should be. So dementia, strokes, any, kind, any type of brain damage can cause it. Um, it can be actual weakness of the muscles themselves. So muscle weakness can cause dysphagia or in turn aspiration. Um, and even, even if the muscles aren't weak, they can have reduced range of motion that can cause dysphagia. So a good example of that would be Parkinson's disease. Um, in Parkinson's, the actual muscles aren't technically weak, but they're not moving like they should. They don't have that full range of motion, and so that can cause dysphagia and aspiration risk as well. Um, any type of facial nerve paralysis the actual nerves that activate the muscles. So this could be like Bell's palsy is an example of facial nerve damage. So something like that could cause it. Um, any kind of throat cancer or um, stiffness there. So like those with throat cancer or other situations that have radiation to the throat, it can actually cause the muscles to be stiff and scar tissue can develop that also further limits the movement of those muscles. So that's another cause of dysphagia. Um, there really are many different things that can cause you know, varying degrees of dysphagia that can be temporary or permanent depending on the situation. Um, but regardless of the cause, this is a serious issue because food or liquid entering the lungs, aspiration is very dangerous and can be deadly. And you know, there are things that can be done to help with this and there are treatments for it, but a lot of people just don't know they're out there.
So while dysphagia can be very serious and aspiration can have very serious complications, thankfully there are treatment techniques available to us. Um, some of the treatment techniques that I use here at Swallowing and Neurological Rehabilitation, so if you come see me, um, we have a lot of different muscle exercises that we can do to actually retrain the swallowing muscles. And one tool that I use here, this is called neuromuscular electrical stimulation, and I actually use vital stim equipment, so I'll show that here. It's a little machine that looks like this. We have here we have our lead cords and some electrodes. And with this system, electrodes are actually applied to the throat. So first I would have the patient sent for a modified barium swallow study. So this would actually show us what specific muscles we really need to target, kind of where the problem is. Um, the electrodes can be applied to those muscles and we can actually use neuromuscular electrical stimulation along with our regular exercises for these muscles and actually strengthen and retrain the muscles involved in swallowing. So that's one treatment op option is actually addressing the muscle dysfunction. Um, another option is compensatory strategies. So in the meantime, while you are having difficulty and you are recovering from that, there are things, strategies that we can train you to actually improve your functioning in the meantime and protect you from aspiration. Um, so for example, again, based on your swallow study results, um, for some people, tucking the chin downward while they swallow can actually cover up and protect the airway and reduce the aspiration risk. Um, or if there is some type of unilateral nerve damage, turning the head to one way while you swallow can protect the, the airway from aspiration. So again, depending on your specific situation, there are techniques that can be learned to actually prevent aspiration as well as actual you know, treatments and exercises to work on strengthening and regaining those abilities. So there are treatments out there that a lot of people just aren't aware of and it is sad you know, that approximately 5% of the population has some form of dysphagia yet most of those people are not getting diagnosed or any type of treatment. And so this is a concern, and it's important for people to know that there is help out there.